Hunting and shooting a vintage rifle is always a challenge. It is never an easy journey. First, you find your rifle. Second, you find your accurate load. Third, you get used to all times, sometimes non-existing ergonomics. Buying a modern hunting rifle today is a boring process. Even the cheapest American or European made rifles will perform well out of box. You can fit them with scopes as big as the rifle itself, a fully adjustable stock, a thermal or night vision. You can even connect some of them to your smartphone. I just wonder how our ancestors could shoot and hunt successfully without these devices. And that's exactly my point in choosing this old stuff. Limit your technical background and develop better personal skills for shooting and hunting. Place quality in front of quantity and you step into a completely new world. These are the mountains close to my hometown in Hungary, the beautiful Pilish. I have been walking these hills for several years now and still it always offers something new, hidden treasures. This was my first occasion with the model 1895 Winchester rifle in the woods after spending many hours at the range finding the right reloading recipe for this old Russian workhorse. That's late June, and for more 5 big games, Red Deer, Fallow Deer, Mouflon, Roe Deer and Wild Boar, Roe Deer and Wild Boar are open for hunting. Both species have a large, with a little exaggeration, booming population in the area, so their numbers, especially the numbers of wild boars, have to be controlled. The hunters of the territory has a strict rule on balancing their numbers, an important task to fulfill the requirements of sustainable hunting. My 1895 Winchester rifle has a lot to tell. It was made during the first years of the first war for military use and according to the battle marks on the rifle and the overall condition it did spend many years in the trenches. It was made for Russia and all the Russian inspection marks are still visible on the receiver and stock. Even if it's a state-of-the-art Winchester it has some special features you do not see on other box magazine lever action guns. It is equipped with two horns to accept the Mosinagan 5 round cartridge clips and its caliber is also strange, 7.62x54R, the traditional three-line Russian caliber still serving in many armies today. She is a close relative to the 1895 musket, originally designed by Winchester for the US Army, later, with small modifications, used as a pattern for the NRA musket. Its sights are suitable for shooting up to 3200 yards, but of course that's well outside the range of the normal rifle tactics. The sights are well constructed and offer a good sight picture even in low light conditions that is very important for hunting purposes. The only thing that I miss is the cleaning kit from the compartment in the buttstock. But let's get back to her woodwalk now. Some would call this rifle heavy with its 4.2 kg weight, but to be honest I'm not walking 50 km a day with the rifle on my shoulders so I do not really care about such data. I have several half day hunting passes that I walk regularly here, but none of them is longer than 10 km. My trail is connecting several promising spots like large fields for roe deer, springs, edges of cornfields, but ends up near a traditional high stand where I finish the last hour before dark. These high stands are placed close to water and in many cases we also place some salt here to attract the game. What I really love about this area is that it is very close to the picture I have in mind about the locations of the old cowboys and Indians novels from my childhood.
Dark was coming fast. And as the last beams of sunlight are blocked by the hills, the game starts to move. That day was an exceptionally lucky day for me. A beautiful red stag was feeding on the grasses just 80-90 meters from me. Its antlers were still not complete, it will take another month to reach full size, but this stag was already large. I really hope that I will meet him in September as well. And these days are excellent examples that you don't have to shoot to hunt. Recording this tag was just as satisfying as firing the rifle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Ball here and I have a very special rifle for you today. This is a Winchester Model 1895 rifle that's actually the last phase of the lever action rifle design. It was designed by John Moses Browning and the key benefit of this rifle is that it has a box magazine instead of a tube magazine which finally allowed the loading of the pointed bullets into cartridges that are used for lever action rifles no flat point anymore just ballistically perfect bullets ladies and gentlemen before we go on with the history of this rifle let's find out the history of the modern military rifle cartridge the first successful repeating rifle design was the tube magazine system designed by benjamin tyler henry this system, where the cartridges are placed in a metal tube under the barrel after one another, was widely copied by successful European military rifle designs like the Swiss Vetterli, the Austrian Frühwirt and Kropacek rifles, and the German model 1871 per 84 Mauser rifle. All these firearms fired a close to 11mm heavy lead slug propelled by black powder at a moderate velocity. The first military rifle to fire a cartridge charged with smokeless powder and a jacketed bullet was the French model 1886 Labour rifle. This rifle was still built around the tube magazine system, but the cartridge was designed so the point of the bullet could not reach the primer of the next round. To achieve this, the case was strongly coned, and the base received a circular groove where the point of the bullet behind could rest. This cartridge shape was working with repeating rifles, but later, when automatic feeding systems were developed, caused huge problems. A much better design was the box magazine, that allowed the use of more comfortable case forms, while solved the problem of the pointed bullet. The Russian army voted for the box magazine system and adopted the model 1891 rifle in 7.62x54R caliber. The original 7.62x54R cartridge held a 13.64 gram bullet with a highly rounded point, but the experiences of the Russo-Japanese war in 1904-05 proved their inadequacy. Following German development, a lighter 9.61 gram bullet with better ballistics was accepted for service in 1908. The case was charged with a new propellant as well. This new cartridge was lighter, so the soldier could carry more, still keeping the overall weight. When John Moses Browning started to work on the new lever action design, he was already late. The bolt action designs fed from a box magazine took over the position of the tube magazine and lever action rifles. The model 1895 rifle, patented on 5th November 1895, however, was not a bad design at all. It finally featured a box magazine and fired a smokeless cartridge with pointed bullets. The rifle was manufactured in such excellent calibers as the 3003, the 3006 Springfield, the 3040 Krug, and the big bore 405 Winchester favorite Africa rifle of Teddy Roosevelt. 
The Russian contract rifles were manufactured by Winchester for the Imperial Russian government during the First World War to ease the great loss of Mosinagant rifles that occurred in the first years of the conflict. Nearly 300,000 were shipped to the Russian government just until the breakout of the revolution when the shipments were stopped. Before I start shooting an old rifle like this, I always check the bore. So let's have a look inside the bore of this rifle. When you buy a First World War rifle, be prepared that you are not buying for the best condition. These rifles were often shot with cartridges with corrosive primers that has its toll on the bore condition. My rifle is anywhere to perfect as well, the forcing cone seems heavily burnt, and although the rifling is strong and visible, the surface is matte and pitted. I used a digital endoscope by Endosnake for this job. It's small and versatile enough to be used with your PC or smartphone. When you have worn bore, forget the castlet bullets and choose a jacketed projectile with flat base, preferably with an open jacket at the bottom. The original bullet also had a skirt, so it can still fill the grooves upset by the gas pressures even if the bore was worn. But enough of talking now, let's check what she can still do at 50 meters with the commercial ammo and my reload. I started the first shooting session with the 180 grain soft point cartridge of the Czech ammo maker Salier Bello. I had no particular reason for choosing this, this was available at the shop of the shooting range. The group was a bit high, but it was much better than what I was expecting. Now let's check the reloaded cartridges. These runs were not fully resized, only the neck and the shoulder were shaped back to the original form, so they have a much tighter fit in the chamber. They need a little force for chambering and eject. These cartridges are charged with Vichtavori powder and the flat base soft point Sierra 150 grain bullet, the same weight as the original projectile, but a bit shorter due to the absence of the cavity on the base.
My reload resulted less flash, less smoke and a milder recoil. Let's check what we have at 50 meters first. Well, it looks like that at this distance, the two groups are pretty close to each other. And this is a commercially available ammunition. One, two, three, four, five shots. And this is the one I reloaded. One, two, three, four shots. Well, the reloaded cartridge, even if it was a primitive tool that I was using, is still better. I have one, two, three, four shots within, let's say, five centimeter, maximum five centimeters. Well, for hunting, this is perfect. Of course, this is not hole in hole because the bore is not perfect, but who cares when the rifle is so accurate for hunting? That's a good start. Let's check it at 100 meters. Reloading the 7.62x54R cartridge is not a big deal because all the great reloading manufacturers are tooled up for this caliber. But today I would like to use the low-end tool. I would like to use the Lee loader set to reload my cartridges for this rifle. That's a very simple tool and a very cheap tool. Let's see how it works. The Russian 7.62 cartridge is not a big deal to reload. Plenty of tools and data are available for this caliber. But when you're selecting a load, never rely on anything else but the data sourced from the manufacturer of your powders, bullets and tools. The process starts with removing the spent primer with the decapping pin and the decapping chamber. Next step is to resize the case mouth and the neck with the sizing die. Hammer the case into the die until the base is in flush with the base of the sizing die. Now it is time to prime the case with the priming chamber and priming rod. This step will also release the case from the die. You need only a few gentle hits. Don't overdo it as the primer can go off. For saving your eyes, always wear safety glasses while priming. Check if the primer is in flush with the base of the case. Reinsert the case into the die. Put it on the decapping chamber. Now you can feel the charge. Always double check the charge on the reloading scale. My most accurate charge was 3.1 grams of Wichtavori N140 powder. Leave the case in the die and leave the whole assembly on the decapping chamber. Drop the bullet into the mouth of the die and use the bullet seater rod of the priming chamber to push the projectile in a desired depth. Be sure to check the minimum overall length of your selected charge. The seating depth can be adjusted due to the threaded stop collar of the chamber. And there you go, your reloaded round is ready. Let's hit the range again and see the difference between the performance of the commercial ammo and my reload at 100 meters. I start with the commercial ammo first.
Now let's check the reloaded cartridges. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's funny. And that's funny, this is even tighter than, a, than the group at 50 meters. This is one, two, three, four shots at 100 meters with my reloaded ammo. I mean, reloaded with a very cheap tool, with this little Lee something which is not considered an accurate and, and, and precise reloading tool. And still it works, guys, still it works. 150 grains bullet, it's a cheap Sierra bullet for hunting. This is a simple flat base, soft point bullet, and it's good. So this was the commercially available cartridge. One, two, three, and four shots, it went somewhere here. It's pretty high, and it's good. This gives me a reason to try it at 200 meters. What do you think about that? The sights of these rifles are designed so the soldier can aim somewhere at the center of the body and have the hits in the upper body of the enemy soldier at reasonable distances like 300 meters. This is why my rifle shoots so high. But the group is very good, so how about trying the rifle at 200 meters now? As you probably saw, the impact point was still very high and many of my rounds passed over the target. I needed quite a few shots to find the target. And while I was trying and trying, my target camera ran out of battery power. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the 200 meter group size and uh, I have to say that I wasted around 10 rounds to find the target. So I wasted all my commercial ammo. I cannot make the comparison now. This is my reloaded ammo. This is my, my uh, 150 grain bullet, Sierra bullet, uh, loaded with my Victory powder. And uh, I really have to say that this is perfect. Even if the bore is not mint, who cares? 
this old technology still can handle the job and shoot four shots in a group of 12 centimeters that's that's uh, let's say five inches not more than five inches or a bit less than five inches this is good this is cool at 200 meters i love that i just love that things work as they have to the model 1895 rifle did not have a good reputation in the russian army Probably because of the poor Russian ammo quality, many of the rifles did not perform well on the official inspections. Whether this is true or not, the box magazine lever action rifle is surely more vulnerable for dirt, while it is also overcomplicated compared to a bolt action rifle. So the rifle is good, the ammo is good, but before I go hunting I really have to do something with the front sight. I need a taller one to have the, the impact points at let's say up to 100 meters at a reasonable level that I can manage during hunting. When you're hunting with uh, an old rifle like this and with open sights in the forest, well, it's very hard to judge distances, which means that within 100 meters uh, the best thing is that you don't have to do anything. You can use the same sight, that you, same sight setting that you can use for 50 meters to 80 meters and 100 meters and probably a bit more this rifle so I need a taller front sight and uh, fortunately it is very easy to replace the front sight on the model 1895 Imperial Winchester because it is just held by a little pin it's a 1.7 millimeter metal sheet so I just made a repro of the original a taller repro of the original I filed it to size and now it is perfect at 50 meters and at 100 meters I really have to aim at the same spot to have the, the bullets the impact points just where I want to so now the rifle is ready for hunting I spent some really nice days talking with the rifle but never had a clear chance to shoot at a really nice location I met roe deer two times during these days based on his body shape he was over the middle age so that could be a good target for me The location was excellent, but nothing seemed to move that day. It was just a bit too hot for the game to start moving early, so I waited patiently till the sun goes down. And just a few minutes after 9, my roe deer appeared.
The distance was close to 90 meters, a bit more than what I like and the shot was a little behind where I aimed. But still, it killed fast. After a few seconds, the roebuck went silent. So that's how the first hunt ended. And based on the condition of the teeth, my assumption was right. The age was probably between 5 and 7 years. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that this rifle will deliver me some excellent times shooting and hunting. You have been watching the Captain Boy YouTube channel. If you like what I do, then please subscribe to the channel and also please like this video. If you wish and you have some additional information, you can also comment at the comment section. If you wish to support me, you can do it through Patreon. You can find a link to the Patreon site under this video, but you can also buy your authentic American Civil War cartridge boxes and cartridge formers. They are available in our eBay store and in our web shop as well. And we are also manufacturing reproductions of 19th century rangefinders or stadias that you can find also in the eBay store and in our web shop. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.